So at this point, I don't think that any real leftist seriously believes that Tulsi Gabbard is progressive. I mean, at best, you could say that she's a centrist, but I think that functionally speaking, she's basically just a right-wing grifter at this point. I mean, this has been her trajectory ever since she abandoned her congressional seat to pursue her failed presidential campaign, which was extremely stupid, by the way. But she's even been hired by Rumble, a right-wing alternative to YouTube, to become an influencer. And she's getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars per year to, I mean, I'm assuming, warn her right-wing audience and astroturfed audience about the dangers of transgender high school athletes and how censorship is bad, unless, of course, we're talking about censoring BDS activists, because then it seems like she's going to be on board for that form of censorship. So she's just, she's so strange. She's gone mask off multiple times. Even during her presidential campaign, she abandoned Medicare for All. And now she is basically undermining one of the main reasons why people liked her, her anti-war stance. And there were a lot of red flags here. So whenever she talked about how anti-war she was, she would always use very interesting and deliberate rhetoric, right? She'd talk about how regime change war is bad, regime change war is bad, regime change war is bad. Okay, I get it. I agree with you technically. I do think that regime change wars are bad, but you don't have to add that caveat every single time. You can just say war is bad in general and we'll know that you also mean regime change wars. But there was a very specific reason why she said regime change war is bad and not all wars are bad. She also conspicuously never denounced U.S. imperialism and there's a reason for this, because Tulsi Gabbard is a U.S. imperialist, and she also is pro-war. And you don't have to take my word for it. You can take her word for it, because she's going to tell you how pro-war she is on Tucker Carlson's program. Now, before I show you the video clip, I do want to give you some additional context. So last week, the U.S. military admitted that it killed 10 innocent civilians via a drone strike in Kabul. And Tucker Carlson in this segment is going to criticize the Biden administration for this, and rightly so in my opinion. But what's interesting to me is that Tucker Carlson said nothing when Donald Trump increased drone strikes overall by more than 400%. So he is correct. Like, I don't have an issue with him condemning drone strikes. In fact, I wish that more news pundits would do this. But the hypocrisy is what I have an issue with. So basically, he's only talking about this. He's only pretending to care because he's using this as an excuse to attack Biden. That's fine. But he's going to bring in Tulsi Gabbard, assuming that she's going to attack Joe Biden because this is the anti-war person, supposedly, right? Well, no, she's actually going to take this in a different direction, and she's going to defend drone strikes, literally. And she says a lot of other stuff that should make any actual leftist feel very, very uncomfortable. So for weeks, the Biden administration told us that a drone strike had killed a group of ISIS-K terrorists, whatever that is, in Kabul. And there were secondary explosions that proved they were suicide bombers, but they were lying forced by the New York Times to admit it, they've now conceded they killed a number of innocent people, including children. Here's the interesting part. Mistakes happen. But in this case, no one in the Pentagon has been punished for this mistake or for lying about it. We thought it'd be interesting to see what Tulsi Gabbard thinks about this. She's a former member of Congress from Hawaii. She served in Iraq as a member of the Hawaii Army National Guard. She's still serving the country in the military. She joins us tonight. Congressman, thanks so much for coming on. So you get to lie, I mean, this will not shock you because you've seen it so much, but you get to lie about the loss of human life, you get caught and nothing happens to you? What kind of system is that? I mean, this kind of accountability is critical. I, I wanna point out first that anytime there are civilian casualties in war, it is tragic and terrible. Yeah. War is a terrible thing. And, and I think it's important for the American people to understand that Islamist jihadists are continuing to wage war against us. And the Islamist ideology, not the same as the religion of Islam, but this Islamist ideology, which is a political ideology that inspired the terrorist attacks on our country on 9-11, uh, is, is the greatest threat that we're facing right now in this country and the world. It is the foundation of governance of so-called Islamic countries like Turkey and Iran and uh, Saudi Arabia and, and Pakistan. Uh, and it's what's behind the discriminatory policies that they have in these countries against Christians, uh, Hindus, Buddhists, atheists, and others. So as long as these Islamist jihadists are waging war against us, we have to work to defeat them militarily and ideologically. 
And militarily, we have two choices in how we do that. Number one, we can continue to invade and occupy and nation build in countries around the world, just as we did in Afghanistan at great cost. Number two, we can take a targeted approach using airstrikes, using our special forces to go in and go after these terrorist cells. The reality is that the cost, the cost to the American people, the cost to our troops, the cost to civilians will be far less if we take this very targeted approach to go after these jihadist terrorist cells than if we continue making the very same mistakes that we saw in Afghanistan and other parts of the world of invasion, occupation, and nation building. Yeah, so make no mistake about it. When she said on the campaign trail that she was against regime change wars, it's because she literally just had a tactical disagreement. She thought that regime change wars weren't a good way to facilitate her ultimate goal. And what she just did there was endorse drone strikes. Just a couple of weeks ago, Air Wars released a report showing that the U.S. government killed between 22,000 and 48,000 innocent civilians. And yet she is, just weeks later, advocating for drone strikes on national television. This is your anti-war candidate? Will any of the leftists who boosted her ever admit that they were wrong about her? <laughs> <laughs> Now, she says, uh, Islamist jihadists are continuing to wage wars against us. That's why she believes we should continue to do our illegal drone policy in Pakistan, Yemen, Somalia. And um, she says that uh, the greatest th uh, threat that we're facing right now in the country and in the world is uh, jihadism. She said that with a straight face. She said, it is the greatest threat we're facing right now in the country and the world. First of all, I would argue that the U.S. government, that is the biggest terrorist threat in the world. But when it comes to threats that the world is facing, how can you say that with a straight face, knowing that climate change could literally eradicate our entire species, not just a human species, but all types of species. Tree species are going extinct, animal species, plants. I mean, I don't think that she's actually dumb. I think that she's just extremely disingenuous. And by saying this to Tucker Carlson's right-wing audience, they don't believe in climate change. So they think, oh, wow, she must be correct. So she knows who she's speaking to, but it's just to say something like that is so embarrassing. The fact that she said that with a straight face, I mean, it says everything you need to know about Tulsi Gabbard. Also, um, she says that when it comes to the Islamist uh, jihadists, we have to work to defeat them militarily and ideologically. So she's already telling you, here's what we can do. We have no choice. We have to go after them. So we can either wage regime change wars, which we all know she hates, or, quote, we can take a targeted approach using airstrikes. She is quite literally endorsing the use of drones which have single-handedly killed tens of thousands of innocent civilians. How does she sleep at night? This is the anti-war politician that everyone was waiting for? She's endorsing drones. And the drone strike that she was brought on to discuss specifically, the fact that she had absolutely no remorse whatsoever and didn't even address it, sidestepped it to talk about how bad Muslims were, it's just, it's beyond the pale for me. These are the victims, some of the victims killed by that drone strike. On the top left, those two little boys were nine and 10 years old. Now on the bottom in the middle, those two children in the orange sweaters, they were three and four years old. The little girl on the bottom right, she was just two years old. Tulsi said in that clip that we have to use drones because this Islamist jihadist threat so, you know, we use drones because they reduce the costs. Tell the families of those victims, tell the family of that little girl who was two years old, Tulsi, that these drone strikes reduce costs. Say it to their faces, I dare you, you fucking fraud. You wouldn't do that because you know it's not true. You're lying. You're lying. You don't care about them. What a fucking fraud. By now... If anyone is still boosting Tulsi Gabbard and they claim that they're on the left, acknowledge that they're either dumb 
or disingenuous. And for anyone, any political commentator who actually endorsed Tulsi Gabbard and campaigned for Tulsi Gabbard and boosted Tulsi Gabbard, maybe we shouldn't trust their judgment. Maybe these folks should uh, admit that they were wrong and apologize to their audiences. People in America aren't going to be killed by some fucking terrorist attack by a jihadist. They're more likely to die due to COVID, due to a lack of health insurance or climate change. So, I mean, Tulsi Gabbard at this point is a joke, but, you know, if you didn't know this by now, then there's there's no plausible deniability left. I mean, she's gone full mask off. When somebody tells you who they are, believe them. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. 